Second, we have pouring boiling water to the soil. This method of soil sterilization is commonly done by pouring boiling water at 100 degrees Celsius on the soil to kill whatever pathogens are present in the soil, then allowing the soil to cool prior to use. Third, we have solarization. Solarization is a method of soil sterilization uses the sun to heat the soil. Solarization can control soil-borne diseases with seeds and some nematodes including root knot nematodes. The soil is exposed under the sun. To solarize soil, the soil is covered with clear polyethylene or plastic sheets. The best time is during the hot season, where there is a plenty of sun. The sun heats up the soil through the plastic, and the plastic sheets keeps the heat inside the soil. The sheets should be left in the field for four weeks. Fourth, we have biofumigation. Soil-borne pests and pathogens can be suppressed by chemical compounds that are released during the composition of certain crops. This is called biofumigation. The chemical compounds that kill or suppress pathogens are principally isothiocyanates. Those crops with biofumigation potentials are, are used as rotation crop or a companion crop or a green manure crop. Fifth and last is the chemical treatment. Treat the soil with soil with chemicals like formaldehyde, one tablespoon per one gallon of water. However, the use of chemicals is not environmentally friendly because chemicals may kill not only destructive microorganisms but also the beneficial ones. Okay, my dear students, that's it. Let's have a recap on our topic for today. Can you define growing media? Yes, great job! Growing media are the materials that your plants grow. Growing media are often formulated from a blend of different raw materials in order to achieve the correct balance of air and water holding capacity for the plants to be grown. We also discuss the three, the three main functions of growing media. Can you enumerate them? Okay, the three main functions of growing media are Number one, supply roots with nutrients, air and water. Number two, allow maximum root growth. Number three, physically support the plants. Now, can you give the different components soil media? Great! The different soil media components are compost, sawdust, sand, rice hull, coco coir, animal manure, and garden soil. We also discussed the different soil sterilization methods. 
Can you give them? Very good. Here are the different methods of soil sterilization. Number one, burning organic materials on the soil. Number two, pouring boiling water to the soil. Number three, solarization. Number four, biofumigation. And lastly, chemical treatment. At this juncture, let us see how will you understand the lesson. Kindly get a piece of paper and pen. We will be going to have a multiple choice quiz. It only consists of five items. Write the letters. Are you ready? Okay, number one. What is the soil component that is natural fiber extracted from the husk of a coconut? A. Coco coir B. Garden soil C. Sand I'll repeat. What is the soil component that is natural fiber extracted from the husk of a coconut? A. Coco coir B. Garden soil C. Sand Number 2. A method of soil sterilization which is not environmentally friendly is blank. A. Biofumigation B. Chemical treatment C. Solarization A method of soil sterilization which is not environmentally friendly is blank. A. Biofumigation B. Chemical treatment C. Solarization. Number three. What is the process of subjecting the soil to heat or chemicals to kill microorganisms and other bacteria? A. Soil sterilization. B. Soil testing. C. Soil media. I repeat, what is the process of subjecting the soil to heat or chemicals to kill microorganisms and other bacteria? A. Soil sterilization B. Soil testing C. Soil media Number 4 it is a method of soil sterilization that uses the sun to heat the soil is called blank. A. Biofumigation B. Chemical treatment C. Solarization I repeat, it is a method of soil sterilization that uses the sun to heat the soil is called blank. A. Biofumigation B. Chemical treatment C. Solarization Number 5. What is the materials formulated from a blend of different raw materials in order to achieve the correct balance of air and water holding capacity for the plants to be grown? A. Growing media B. Garden soil C. Compost I repeat, what is the materials formulated from a blend of different raw materials in order to achieve the correct balance of air and water holding capacity for the plants to be grown. A. Growing media B. Garden soil C. Compost Number 6 
Yes, this is it. Are you ready to check your answers? Okay, and here are the correct answers. Number one, A, Coco Coir. Number two, B, Chemical Treatment. Number three, A, Soil Sterilization. Number four, C, Solarization. And number five, Growing Media. I repeat, number one, A, Coco Coir. Number two, B, Chemical Treatment. Number three, A, soil sterilization. Number four, C, solarization. And number five, A, growing media. Okay, count the number of correct items. For those who got a perfect score, congratulations, you did a great job. For those who got 4 to 3, still very good. And for those who got 2 and below, don't lose hope. Get your competency-based learning materials and uh, study your answers. That was great learning experience with you learners. Hopefully you enjoyed our lesson for today. I will be glad to be with you again on our next episode and another exciting topic. Always remember, the skills, knowledge, and wisdom in TLE are important. This has been your teacher broadcaster, Arnel Mangrobang, saying, In agriculture, you will get a dirty hands. But always remember that those hands will feed a lot of people. Until next time! Sa pagnanais na mapigilan ng ating pamahalaan ang pagdami ng bilang ng mga kaso ng COVID-19, binuo ang One Hospital Command Center o OHCC upang mas mabilis na matugunan ang medikal na pangangailangan ng ating mga kababayan. Bukas ang OHCC 24 oras araw-araw. Tumawag lamang sa mga hotline nito sa 0919-977-3333. O 0915-777-7777 O 02-886-50500 Maaari ring i-download ang Pure Force Citizens app sa Android o iOS upang mabilis na matugunan ang sino mang nangangailangan. Layon din ng OHCC na maiwasang mapuno ang kapasidad ng bawat ospital. Kaya't kung ikaw ay kinakailangang tumawag sa OHCC, Mabibigyan ka ng libreng preliminary consultation. Para sa mga nangangailangan ng emergency quick response, makikipag-ugnayan ang OHCC sa DOH Bed Tracker at sa mga ospital upang makahanap agad ng pinakamalapit na bakanteng ospital. Ang transportasyon o ambulansya naman ng ospital na inirefer ng OHCC sa pasyente ang siyang susundo sa bahay nito. Kaya't kapag ikaw ay nakakaranas ng anumang sintomas ng COVID-19 o nangangailangan ng agarang tulong medikal, tumawag lamang sa OHCC at handa silang tumulong sa lahat ng oras. Tuwing sasapit ang alas 5 ng hapon, para ngalan natin ang ating mga kababayan na nasa unahan laban sa COVID-19. 
Lumabas tayo sa pintuan ng ating mga tahanan. Dumungaw tayo sa ating mga bintana. At atin silang bigyan ng masigabong palakpakan. Gumawa tayo ng ingay. Ipagbunyi ang ating frontliners. At ipahayag ang ating walang hanggang suporta sa kanilang kabayanihan. Gusto ko lang pong i-take itong opportunity ito para magpasalamat sa lahat ng mga doktor at nurses, especially yung mga nag-alaga po sa akin, sa buong Asian Hospital, at sa lahat po ng ating frontliners. Umawit tayo at sumayaw at ipakita ang ating talento bilang pagsaludo sa mga bayaning nasa unahan. Talunin natin ang COVID-19. Sama-sama natin pagalingin ang ating inang bayan. Kaya natin to. We heal as one. A blessed and good day to all the grade 9 learners from all over the school's division of Tarlac Province. Welcome to Aral Tarlaqueño here on RTV, Tarlac Channel 26, simulcast over DCTC, Radio Pilipino, Tarlac. I am your teacher broadcaster, Ma'am Abigail Fausto Bartolome, who will be with you in this 25-minute informative and educational broadcast about our lesson in Health Grade 9. I would also like to welcome all our students, our dear supportive parents, our valuable stakeholders that this radio and TV broadcast may reach. Once again, welcome to Aral Tarlaqueño here on RTV Tarlac Channel 26, simulcast over DCTC Radio Pilipino Tarlac. Before we start, I just want to make some important reminders before listening to our broadcast. Make sure that you are in a quiet, relaxed, and comfortable place when listening. Make sure that you have a copy of your module, compendium of notes, your last, or your learner's activity sheet to better understand our lesson today. Our topic for today is about the sixth classification of drugs and the early warning signs of drug abuse. Are you all now ready and prepared for a new session of Fun Feed Learning with Teacher Abby? Very good! I guess you are all now prepared and excited to learn! An important reminder to all our listeners, especially to our dear parents and students, to please feel free and comfortable enough to ask questions during and after the broadcast. We want to have an interactive discussion with you. I want to hear from you. You can post your questions, 
queries, and clarifications via the FB live stream of Aral Tarlaqueño here on RTV Channel 26, post a message on our Class GC, or simply through SMS. You can message me directly, your teacher broadcaster, on my number, 0922-704-5331. I'll try my best to answer all your questions, queries, and clarification before our broadcast ends. Once again, you can message me through my number, 0922-704-5331. I'm looking forward to receive messages and clarification about our lesson today. In our previous lesson in Health 9, we have learned about drugs, the different definition, concepts, the reasons, the effects, why people take drugs. And today, before we start with our activity, please take a hold of your modules, books, learning activity sheet, your pen and a piece of paper, or simply post your answer on the FB live stream of Aral Tarlaqueño, post a message on our class GC, or simply through SMS. Okay, here it is. Our activity is entitled Shout Me Out, or simply a Name Me Game. Your teacher broadcaster will read the definition and you will identify what is being described or what is being asked. Are you ready, class? Very well. You can post your answers after I've counted. 3, 2, 1, go. Are you ready for concept number one? This is any substance, when taken into the body, alters the body's function either physically and psychologically. What is your answer? Are you ready with your answer, guys? The answer is drugs. Very good. Many posted the correct answer. Next question number two. These are the three ways on how these drugs can get into our bodies. Substances like drugs don't get into our bodies by accident or by themselves. It is because of our own free will, self-discipline, and mindful decision as well. Are you ready with your answers? The three ways on how these drugs can get into our bodies are the following. We have oral, nasal or inhalation, and intravenous. When we say oral, it is given through the mouth. When we say nasal or inhalation, it uses primarily the nose. And when we say intravenous, it is administered through the vein through the use of a syringe and a needle. I guess many of you got the correct answer. Very good. Let's now move on to the third question. Who are most likely to be affected or become a victim of drug use? What is your answer? The correct answer is drug addiction impacts all ages, genders, ethnicities, backgrounds, and professions. So you see, class, it's not only the youth or students like you are prone to become a victim of drugs. So we should always be aware and mindful at all times. Question number four. What do you think are the reasons why people take drugs? I know for sure you have a lot in mind. Hmm, 
Very good! I can see some of your responses posted on our group chat or GC. I can say that you are very much active in participating in our broadcast this afternoon. Okay, let's check if your answers are correct. Here are the reasons why people take drugs. Peer and curiosity. Teens and young people wanted to belong to a group or be accepted by their friends. Curiosity is among our school children and they want to have a first-hand experience of it. Next is environmental influences. The environment and growing up in poverty or in households with drug addiction and abuse can create a high risk of abuse for they may perceive it as normal and acceptable. We also have broken families. Growing up with a broken family is also the reason why people take drugs. Lack of love, time, and affection that leads to be associated with drug use and abuse. Next is social media influences. Social media like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and the likes have become a huge part of most teens' lives. And most half of the day are spent browsing and gaming, right? That is why we should guide our children and our students in using these social media platforms. And finally, Poverty. The burden of financial stress can be intolerable for many people. They think drugs is the solution to their problems. That is why many result to drug use and trafficking due to the promise of high income. Okay class, so those are only a few of the many reasons why people take drugs. We have also discussed the differently commonly abused drugs in the Philippines. Can you still name them? Very good! I can see many of you have answered the following. The most commonly abused drugs is marijuana, shabu, and inhalant. I am glad that you have remembered and mastered our previous lesson and that leads us to the main part of our discussion which is the sixth classification of drugs and the early warning signs of drug use. For those who have just tuned in, Welcome to Aral Tarlakenyo here on RTV Tarlak Channel 26 simulcast over DCTC Radio Pilipino Tarlac. Our first classification is the gateway drugs. Gateway drugs such as cigarette and alcohol are legal drugs that a non-drug user might try, which can lead him or her to more dangerous drugs such as marijuana and shabu. It is also based on the studies that teenagers who engage in early smoking and in early drinking have higher chance of experimenting with dangerous drugs of abuse. In the Philippines, people below 18 years of age are not allowed to buy and use gateway drugs. Sad to say, but in reality, this cigarette and alcohol are readily available and accessible even to the minors. So, as their ates and their kuyas, what can you do to help your younger brothers and sisters keep away from these gateway drugs? Of course, you can help them by explaining to them at an early age, the harmful effects of these substances when taken into the body. In that way, you have shared your knowledge, love, and protection to your siblings as well. 
Isn't that good? Next in line are the depressant drugs. They slow down the central nervous system. The central nervous system includes the brain, spinal cord, and nerves. Doctors commonly prescribe depressant drugs to help certain persons to be less angry, less stressed, or tense. Depressant drugs relax muscles, nerves, and makes patients sleepy and lightheaded. In addition, depressants are also called as downers. In Tagalog, we call them as pampatamlay. Next on the list are the stimulant drugs. Stimulant drugs speeds up a person's central nervous system. They have the opposite effect of depressants. In layman's term, stimulants are also called as uppers or speeders. In Tagalog, we call them as pampasigla. Stimulants makes a person energy high, and its negative effect is depression and tiredness. Stimulants include amphetamines like caffeine, nicotine, and cocaine. That is why people who tend to be awake for a long period of time drink more coffee and take cigarette coating. Coffee is life, as they say. Moving on to the next classification, we have narcotics. Narcotics are drugs which relieve pain and induce sleepiness. In medicine, these drugs are administered in moderation to patients with mental disorders and those in severe pain like cancer. Always bear in mind that these drugs should be taken under proper authorities and if not, it can lead to severe health and mental disorder and worse, death. The fifth classification of drugs is hallucinogen. Hallucinogens are drugs which distorts reality. It affects all senses and makes a user see, hear, or feel things that don't exist in the time being. The name hallucinogens came from the word hallucination, which is to perceive illusions. This is also the reason why drug users commit crimes. Last and definitely not the least, we have inhalants. Inhalants are found in ordinary household chemical products. And did you know that they are readily available and easily accessible to, to young children? The example of household products are acetone, rugby, solvent, spray paint, cleaning fluid, and even your simple pen marker. The most commonly abused inhalant is the rugby. I hope you have taken down notes because later, you will be answering questions related to our lesson. Okay, let's move on. After discussing to you the sixth classification of drugs, I think it is just the right time or the high time for us to discuss also the dif different early signs of drug use. It is important to know the signs and symptoms of drug use because they are linked to changes in the body, behavior, and emotion. Thankfully, we can discover when a friend or a family member has become addicted to drugs by observing the following signs and symptoms of drug use. Here are the following checklists for the signs and symptoms of drug use. Number 1. Visible skin markings, bruises, and cuts on the skin. Drug users and 
may use IVs or intravenous that may leave visible markings on the skin. Number 2. Wearing sunglasses even when not needed. Drug users and abusers usually try to hide signs of their addiction through concealment like wearing sunglasses even when inside their house or even at night time. Number 3 is changes in sleep pattern. Drug users may stay up awake and alert for around 48 hours without sleep. Their bodies may feel tired and sleepy, but their minds won't let them get asleep because of the effects of drugs in their bodies. Number 4 is change in behavior at home and at work. Drug users often feel irritable and always open for a dispute in ideas and there is outbreak of bad temper. They are often hot-headed and resist work responsibilities as well. Number 5 is being involved in troubles and crimes. Drug users and abusers are overly sensitive about things. They are often defensive and hot-headed. And worse, drug use can lead to committing crimes punishable by the law. So class, those are only a few of the different signs of a possible drug user. Be careful and vigilant enough to identify one. But we should always put in our hearts and our minds not to judge these people. Extend a loving hand and understanding, for they are all a victim of drug use. I hope I have given you enough information and knowledge about our lesson today. Are you still with me, guys? Very good. So, to have a short wrap-up of the lesson, can you give me the salient points in the lessons that you remember? Hmm... I can see that you are very much active in posting your answers via live stream and group chat. Let me read to you the answer coming from Erin Angela Gomez. Hello, Erin Angela. And she said, I have learned about the six classification of drugs. They are gateway drugs, depressants, stimulants, narcotics, hallucinogens, and inhalants and also the different early signs of drug use. Very good, Erin Angela. I am glad that you remembered our lesson today. And now, let's have a quiz about our lesson today. This is only a five-item quiz. All you have to do is to identify the correct answer. You can write your answer on your map and notebook, or simply post your answer by the FB live stream of Aral Tarlaqueño here on RTV Tarlac Channel 26. Question number one. What is the substance when taken into the body alters the body's function either physically and psychologically? A. Drugs change in sleep pattern. B. Wearing of sunglasses even when not needed. Letter C, involvement in crimes and trouble. And letter D, all of the above. Number 5, what are these drugs that slows down the central nervous system? A, stimulants. B, inhalants. C, depressants. D, gateway drugs. Okay, let's try to check your answers. Here are the key to correction. Number 1. Letter B. Number 2, A. Number 3, A. Number 4, D. And number 5, A. I hope you get the items correctly. For those who are not, there will always be a next time. So don't be sad. What is important is that you have been honest and you have tried hard. Okay? For... For today's activity in discussion, kindly refer to your learner's activity sheet. This will be your assignment for today's broadcast. 
The title of the activity is Paint Me a Picture. You are going to make and create a drawing or a poster about drugs. It can be its prevention, control, and effect. After all the ideas and information given to you, I am pretty sure that you can create a beautiful output for this activity. You will be graded according to this criteria. Creativity, 25%. Neatness of work, 25%. Interpretation, 25%. Message, 25%. For a total of 100%. That ends up our 25-minute informative and educational broadcast about our Health 9 lesson. I hope you have learned a lot today. I am Ma'am Abigail Fausto Bartolome saying drugs is never a solution to your problems. But instead, we have our friends, our family, and our big God who is always there to help us through. Once again, don't forget to watch us live on Facebook from 8.30 to 5.30 in the afternoon from Monday to Friday for more radio-based lessons based on the most essential learning competencies. Please also take time to like and share our Facebook page, RTV Tarlac Channel 26. Once again, this has been your teacher, Abby, saying stay home, stay safe, and stay away from drugs. Until next time! Tuwing sasapit ang alas 5 ng hapon, para ngalan natin ang ating mga kababayan na nasa unahan laban sa COVID-19. Lumabas tayo sa pintuan ng ating mga tahanan. Dumungaw tayo sa ating mga bintana. At atin silang bigyan ng masigabong palakpakan. Gumawa tayo ng ingay, ipagbunyi ang ating frontliners, at ipahayag ang ating walang hanggang suporta sa kanilang kabayanihan. Gusto ko lang pong i-take itong opportunity ito para magpasalamat sa lahat ng mga doktor at nurses, especially yung mga nag-alaga po sa akin, sa buong Asian Hospital, at sa lahat po ng ating frontliners. Umawit tayo at sumayaw at ipakita ang ating talento bilang pagsaludo sa mga bayaning nasa unahan. Talunin natin ang COVID-19. Sama-sama nating pagalingin ang ating inang bayan. Kaya natin to. We heal as one. Um, congratulations, Radio Pilipino Media Group, for launching its first provincial station here in Tarlac City, the RTV26. Um, the, the airing of this TV station is the first step in achieving its mission to serve and delight people through genuine, relevant, excellent, accessible, thoughtful programs significant to nation building. Um, thank you for the TV production team for making this possible. To all our viewers, I would like to ask for your support not only to our TV station, RTV26, but also to our radio stations, DCTC for AM and 96.11 FM. Congratulations again, uh, RTV26 and more power. Upang matugunan ang mga kinakaharap na pagsubok ng mga guro at mag-aaral sa gitna ng kasalukuyang pandemya, nagsanib tulong si na Congressman Charlie Cojuanco ng unang distrito ng Tarlac, DepEd Region 3 Regional Director Dr. May B. Eklar at Tarlac Schools Division Superintendent Dr. Ronaldo Poson para sa isang napapanahong proyekto na tinaguri ang Project Shine Aral Tarlacenyo. Ang mga mag-aaral ng grade 4 at grade 5, ganun din ang grades 8 and 9 sa buong probinsya ng Tarlac, ay sasa ilalim sa radio-based instruction, katuwang ang himpilang DZTZ 828 kHz AM at RTV Tarlac, Channel 26. First of all, I would like to say thank you to our sponsors uh, for having this Aral Tarlacenyo for the benefit of our learners. 
my dear teachers, uh, my dear parents, and everybody else in Deaf and Tarlac family, you are invited to be a part of this, get involved, engage with it, ask a lot of questions so that we can improve more because this is for you. To you, my dear parents, this is now the opportunity for you to reach us out. Be with us. Tune in to this uh, radio station, DCTC, uh, Radio Pilipino, sa ating pong talapihitan, 828 AM Radio po yan, Angat Parlakenyo. This is for all of us. God bless us all. Hello mga kabida! Ako po si Anna Roses at iniimbitahan ko po kayo malapit na ang Bida ka Mars! Blessed and good afternoon, Grade 9 learners. Welcome to Aral Tarlacenyo here on RTB Channel 26, simulcast over DCTC Radio, Radio Pilipino Tarlac. I am Cesar Wim M. Bergara, CRMB, your teacher broadcaster for Health 9, and who will help you understand our lesson for today. I just want to make some important reminders before listening to our broadcast. Make sure that you are in a quiet, relaxed, and comfortable place when listening. And of course, you should have a copy of your own module or learning activity sheet to better understand our lesson. Welcome to our second quarter lesson in Health 9 for Week 5. Substance use and abuse is the social health concern in the Philippines. This module will help you understand the harmful both short and long-term effects of the different types of drugs. Grade 9 learners, are you all now ready for the new session of learning with teacher CRMB? I guess you are all now ready. A while ago, Teacher Abby discussed about the different types of drugs and their classification, as well as the descriptions. Okay, uh, let's have a short berry game and titles name me. I will give you the meaning and description as well as the picture. Then after I counted 3, 2, 1 and go, you will give your answer. Again, but before we proceed to our lesson, let me just check first if you are if you still remember that you had the, your lesson with Teacher Abby a while ago. And for me to check your responses, you can post your answer on the live stream. You can send me a message through our GC or G Classroom or through SMS. In that way, I can check if you are still with me on this broadcast.
Again, a while ago, Teacher Abby discussed the different types of drugs and their classification as well as the description. And for me again, to check your responses, you can post your answer on the live stream. Uh, our game entitles Name Me. I will give you the meaning and description as well as the picture. Then again, after I counted 3, 2, 1, okay, you will post your answer on the live stream. Okay, let's start. Number one. This includes cigarettes and alcohol. These illegal drugs that our non-drug user might try, which can lead him or her to more dangerous drugs such as marijuana and shabu. Please take note that teenagers who engage in early smoking and early drinking have a higher chance of using and experimenting with dangerous drugs of abuse. Okay, name me and 3, 2, 1, go! So, what is your answer? Okay, if your answer is gateway drugs, you've got the correct answers. Thank you for those students who participated in answering the question. Okay, number two. These drugs slow down the central nervous system or the CNS and these drugs also certain responsibility or less angry, less stressed, tense and relaxed muscle and nerves and will surely make the patient sleepy. An example of this is alcohol. Okay, name me in 3, 2, 1, go! Okay, what is your answer? Okay, a lot of you answered depressants and you got the correct answer. Moving on to the question number three. These drugs speed up the central nervous system and these drugs is the opposite of the depressants and make person's energy high. Perfect example of this that keeps you awake is coffee found in caffeine and nicotine found in cigarette. Okay, grade 9 learners, uh, what is your answer? O okay, name me in 3, 2, 1, go! Okay, again, thank you for participating in answering the question. The right answer for this is stimulants. And most of you got the correct answer. Moving on to the question number three. These drugs relieve pain and induce sleepness. In medicine, these drugs are administered in moderation to patients with mental disorders and those in severe pain like cancer. So what is your answer, grade 9 learners? The answer, right, as you can see to the presentation. Okay, name me in 3, 2, 1, go! And of course, the answer is hallucinogens. Thank you. And you've got it right, grade 9 learners. And we are now down to last question. These drugs are found in chemical household products and anesthetics. Example of household products as these type of acetone, types are acetone, rugby or solvent, or ordinary spray, paint, cleaning fluids, and air conditional fluid. You intake this substance through nasal or inhaling. Okay, name me in 3, 2, 1, go. What is your answer, grade 9 learners? Okay, uh, your answer is right, and that is inhalants. Okay, 
Thank you for participating our online review, Grade 9 Learners from all over the Trilag Province. And I'm glad that you still remember our previous lesson that you had with Teacher Abby a while ago. The different types of drugs and namely, gateway drugs, depressants, stimulants, hallucinogens, narcotics, and inhalants. So this leads us to the continuation of our lesson for today's afternoon broadcast in Health 9 for Week 5, which are the uh, short and long-term effects of the different uh, types of drugs mentioned a while ago. For those who are just tuning in, you're listening to RTV Channel 26, simulcast over DCTC Radio Pilipino Tarlac. People give several reasons in taking drugs. Some believe that these drugs can fill them look and uh, good. And some people use drugs for pleasure. Continuous and prolonged drug use has a very bad effects in a person. It can alter his or her behavior, mental, physical, and psychological condition. It also leads the person to severe health problems, poor quality of life, and eventually death. And we must understand that this is not easy to know and feel the effects of drugs in our body because effects are not always the same with drug user. Each classification of drugs has a different short and long-term effects. The short-term effects can last for a couple of days, weeks, or even shorter periods. While the long-term effects can be felt for months, years, or even for a lifetime. So this time, I'm going to show you a short video clip made by my former student of Tarlac National High School. Then later on, you will notice the short and long-term effects of the different classification of drugs. Sa paanong paraan, di ba? Pinapalibutan ako ng mga tao. Kabilang lang naman ako sa isang pinakamasayang barkadahan na madaming humingi. Lagi nilang pinapatibay ang loob ng isa't isa at nagpangakong hindi nila ako liliwan. At syempre, my girlfriend, Claire, ang pinakasweet na babaeng nakilala ko. Ang kuya kong si Carlo ay lagi akong sinusuportahan at binibigyan ng inspirasyon. At nabigyan din ako ng mga magulang na may matibay na rasyon at nagmamahalan. At ang ading kong si Leo, kahit minsan may top up, I cherish them more than anything. Para lang fairy tale ang pagka-perfecto ng buhay ko. Or at least, yun ang nakikita ng mga tao sa paligid ko. O kaya, yun na lang ang gusto kong makita nila. Kasi, mas madali ang lahat sa paraan na yun. Mas madali sa pagsabi ng totoo. Mas madali kaysa mausgan at mahapin ng lipunan. At mararamdaman kong ako'y nag-iisa at kakaiba. Sa panahon kasi ngayon, mas mahalaga na ang posibilidad kaysa sa totoong nangyong dumaan ng pangkakaroon. Ilang tapang yung araw na dumaan ako sa madaming pagsubo. At tila ko nasubukan talaga ng tudhana kung hindi sana abot ang aking kumpi. Pero ba 
bakit gano'n? Hindi naman masarap. Ay, joke lang. Sobrang sarap pala. Para ako nasa langit. Balik sa katotohanan. Inaapi pa din ako ng mga kaibigan ko. At syempre, may away pa din kami ng tampuhin kong girlfriend. Ay. Pero ang totoo niya, nasa punto na ako ng buhay ko na pagod na pagod na akong magpanggap. Pagod maging mag-isa. Pagod na akong mabuhay. At oo, alam ko ang iniisip nyo, na naghahanap lang ako ng atensyon. Anong karapatan ko para gumamit ng droga? Pero kasi, yun ang problema, hindi mo pinili ang droga, ang droga ang pipili sa'yo. Patuloy akong sumisigaw ngunit walang nakakadinig. Nakakayang aminin na ang importanteng bagay na ito ay kailangan ko upang makabuo ng masayang mundo. Dahil kung wala ito, walang kwenta ang buhay ko. Kung kaya ko lang ibalik ang mga oras, sana ay ginawa ko na para may tama ang mga pagkakamali ko. Pero masyado na huli ang lahat. Ang bawat paginom ng ipinagbabawal na gamot, kasiyahan at kasiglahan ang dala sa sistema ko. Nakakatawa nga, dahil lang kahit sa isang bagay na nagpapanatili sa aking mabuhay, ay ang bagay na sa akin papatay. Kuya, ano mo ba ngayon na ako ito? Kasi, paano mo na napapatay ng mata ko? Hindi ko alam na ang mga kailangan ko din pala. Pero sana, makasap kita. Di ko yan. Okay, after watching a short video clip, I hope lear you learn something about it. Just like posting your thoughts on your social media accounts, all you have to do is you need to think first before you click. Okay, moving on to our discussion this afternoon. First in line here is the, the gateway drugs. Gateway drugs are acceptable and legal with restriction. In the Philippines, below 18 years of age are not allowed to use and buy gateway drugs. But in reality, it has become easily accessible to minors. So what I am referring to, these are cigarettes and alcohol. And the use of gateway drugs put a person at risk of more using dangerous and illicit drugs. So let me mention you the short and long-term effects of the gateway drugs, specifically the cigarettes and alcohol. First is the alcohol. The short-term effects of alcohol, headed and light-headedness, slurred speech, slow body reflexes, and coordination. Overconfident and mood swings like depression, 
high spirit, and aggressiveness. While the long-term effects of the uh, alcohol are damage the organ like river, liver, heart, colon, and brain cancer, and of course the cardiovascular diseases like cirrhosis of the liver and poor study and work performance. short-term effects of using this are the following stress rapid heart rate and pulse rate persistent cough difficulty in breathing and halitosis or bad breath and the long-term effects of using tobacco or cigarettes are development of asthma cancer of the mouth throat skin and lungs and of course, hypertension or increased blood pressure, heart attack, and stro stroke which leads to coma and death. So class, please be aware of the harmful effects of the alcohol and cigarettes are readily available and accessible all the time. Next on the line is depressants. Depressants also known as downers. It will suppress or slow down the central nervous system. In the medical field, depressants also known as sedatives, which to treat people with anxiety, mental problems, and sleep disorders like insomnia. So now let me mention you the short and long-term effects of depressants. The short-term effects of depressants are the following. Slow brain function which leads to, to a temporary memory loss. Slow heart rate and pulse rate. Below normal breathing and pattern. Low blood pressure and inability to concentrate a poor judgment. And the long-term effects of the depressants are the following. Aggregation and aggressive behaviors. Depression leading to mental disorders hypertension or high blood pressure, cardiovascular and paralysis of the muscle and nerves, and of course, grade 9 learners, we must be very careful in using and taking depressants as it gives harmful effects to our body. Moving on to the stimulants, they are also known as uppers or stimulants. They stimulate and activate the central nervous system and a person stays awake for a longer period under the influence of stressants. And now, let me mention you the uh, short and long term effects of stressants. Okay, the short and long term effects of stressants are the following. It increases heart rate, pulse rate, high blood pressure, and increase the body temperature and, and alert body responses and inability to sleep. And the long-term effects of the stimulants are paranoia, heart attack, brain damage, kidney liver, and the most, uh, most coma which leads to death. Moving on to the third one, we have here, uh, fourth one, we have here the narcotics. They are also known as the painkillers and induce sleepness. Narcotics are administered to patients with mental disorders. Just like in stimulants, depressants, and gateway drugs, it has the same short and long-term uh, effects. Then moving on to the fourth one, we have here the hallucinogens. Hallucinogen distort what is real, and let me mention you again the if short and long-term effects. Okay, the short and long-term effects of hallucinogens are seeing which are not really or poor judgment of time, and distance inability to sleep, loss appetite, which lasts up to 10 hours. So the long-term effects of hallucinogens are the following. Increased blood pressure brain damage, psychosis, 
or the mental disorders in which reality is distorted or twist or coma. And last, definitely not the least, is the inhalants. Just like hallucinogens and narcotics, uh, it has the same short and long-term effects. So again, grade 9 learners, be careful enough in taking or using illegal drugs. Grade 9 learners, thank you for listening for our broadcaster this afternoon. I am Cesar Rim Embergara saying goodbye. God bless. Stay home, stay safe, and stay, stay away from drugs.